Hey, I've been wanting to make this film for a while now. I think the start of a relationship between a director and composer, uh, especially if they haven't worked together before, um, although sometimes even if they have, um, it can be one that is awkward and tentative. You have perhaps not yet learned to trust each other, nor appreciate each other's uh, aesthetic and taste. So I've been thinking about a uh, list of things that you can do in order to kickstart that relationship, the process of scoring the film um, as a composer. I have a list of five specific things, which I think could be immensely helpful uh, when you're in that position of needing to send the first sketches you've composed to the director, but you're hesitating because you're not sure how they will react. Um, I think I, I want to avoid that. Uh, basically, it needs to be a frictionless process. So here are my five steps to help that happen. Okay, number one, sum the film up in one word. Two if you have to, but preferably one. This is a tricky thing to do. Um, the harder it is to do, uh, says a lot about the film you're trying to score. Okay, as an example, think of Alfred Hitchcock's film Vertigo. Okay, that can be summed up in one word, obsession. The composer Herman has taken that theme of obsession and has woven that into the music. All the themes in that score just drip with obsession. And uh, I, I think that's a really good example of what I'm talking about here. Another one of Hitchcock's films, Psycho, um, that can be summed up with the word anxiety. And again, Herman, the composer, nails that. Okay, so it's not an easy thing to do sometimes. And in fact, the harder it is, says something about the film itself. Um, in fact, I think this is probably a good exercise for the director as well. It helps focus the uh, purity of artistic ambition, I think, if you can say that your film is one word. If you are both as director and composer on the same page with what that word is, then, uh, you know, what could possibly go wrong? Number two. Okay, this might come across as being simplistic, but number two is just hang out. You and the director need to hang out. You need to have a conversation. You need to talk about your favorite films, your favorite music. Um, both of you are filmmakers and you need to have a shared vocabulary. So that could be, you want something to be more Terence Malick or um, a bit of, could you make that cue a bit more Hans Zimmer? Um, I really liked what Hans Zimmer did in The Thin Red Line, so can we make it sound like that? Etc. Etc. you know? Uh, it goes both ways, um, but it's important that you know each other well enough so that you know what you both like. It's interesting because as I'm saying these things, um, a lot of what I've said already describes a good relationship between, say, uh, two lovers. Um, it's, I guess, the human condition that we need to trust each other and be loyal to each other and have a shared aesthetic. Um, know what each other likes and um, what we don't like. Even though the relationship between director and composer is that intense that it can be compared to a romantic relationship, it is one that ends. Um, it has a finite set time. Uh, so it's important that you hit the ground running, know each other well, so there is no awkwardness. This leads me to number three. You as composer create a mood board. It can be a playlist or it can be a folder of MP3s. Um, some of the tracks are yours, some are other composers. It's up to you, but you are trying to define the sound palette, the genre. Um, you are honing in on the mood, the, the emotions, the color of the music that you think will work for this film. So if you have your one word, uh, say vertigo that you and the director both agree on then your mood board will be relating to that one word it also gives you 
something that you can both refer to down the line. Um, the director might say to you, okay, look, you know, I like what you did with the sketch, but can you make it sound more like track number four on the mood board? It saves time. Um, and anything that saves time <laughs> is ideal. Uh, also, mood boards are used by the other departments in the film, casting, uh, costume, lighting, etc. So you should as well. Okay, number four, make sure the logistics of the writing process is set up. For example, know how you're gonna send files. Um, you're gonna be dealing with big files. I use WeTransfer Pro and I use that consistently. I think um, they will see the WeTransfer show up on their inbox and they know it's from me. Um, there's no risk of things going to spam. Have a consistent method of sending files and receiving files so that there's no messing around. The aim is to have the least amount of friction possible. The way things are today, transferring files are an integral part of this whole process. And you won't only just be doing that with the uh, director, but also with the sound designer and say the copyist um, studios, you know, WeTransfer Pro, which I use. And by the way, this is not sponsored by WeTransfer Pro. It's just that I like how simple um, it is to use, both when you're receiving and giving. Um, and you can have your own branding on it too, which is, you know, useful, I think. Okay, number five. So you've got the mood board established. There's a sound palette, genre even, um, established. You have your one word, um, which is like a superpower because when you have that, you can just write. And that's what number five is, just write. Okay, you're not writing to picture, that's extremely important. That comes later. You're just writing music. You have your one word in mind and you're just throwing music onto the page or the DAW or whatever. This is the time to just experiment. Go away somewhere. Um, go away for a week or a weekend or an afternoon. Just be somewhere where you can just do nothing but create music that relates to everything that we've already discussed. This is going to be what you draw from throughout the whole process of writing for this film. And more often than not, I have used um, things I have recorded in this uh, process in the very end product. It is important that you give yourself time to experiment. Something I haven't talked about, but there's always a risk when you do something like the mood board that the director might want something very specific, maybe something that's slightly too close to a piece that's in your mood board. This time now when you're experimenting and just writing a lot of music is your time to break free from any restraints that the mood board might set up. The mood board has been extremely helpful, but now it's the time for you to create. Um, and I've talked about this in other films. You're an artist and you're not a clone of another composer. That's a whole other matter. Create your own identity musically. Okay, so that's five things that will kickstart the writing process and help your relationship with your director. A happy director means a happy composer. Um, and so good luck with that. Let me know in the comments if you agree, disagree, or perhaps um, can add your own experiences. I'm gonna to link to another video where I run through a few cues from a film I scored recently called White Plastic Sky. That film was interesting that it took seven years to create as it's a feature animation. The process of working with the director, uh, both directors for that film was um, incredible. Check out that film and I will see you again soon.